Hello everybody, here's a late night movie review. That's right, I was blessed to hang out with a couple of buddies, The Fluffy Gamer and Wet Movie 1, and they took me out and about and we went to go watch a movie. We went to Amoeba Records, um, and we ate dinner at a Mexican restaurant, and we hung out at City Walk. And then we had a fight about what movie to watch, but they all caved in for me. And I took some videos. Hopefully I have a little vlog out. I don't have editing equipment, but hopefully I can present, you know, the clips all together as a vlog in the next day or two. You might be seeing this uh, movie review from me before that video. I don't know. But um, I wanted to talk, now that I got home, I wanted to talk about the movie Civil War from my perspective. Some of you won't care, so turn off the video now. And I'll do my best at not giving spoiler alerts. But I've been wanting to see this movie, and I'm very interested in it. So I force-fed my way into forcing Fluffy Gamer and Web Movie 1 to watch Civil War. Uh, they didn't want to watch Dune Part 2. Uh, they've already seen the Ghostbusters. And they wanted to watch Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. But I was like, I ain't, if I'm paying money for a movie, I'm, I'm going to watch a movie I want to watch. I didn't have to pay. Fluffy Gamer gave me the gift of a movie ticket and dinner. What a great guy. But I ended up watching Civil War. And because um, I'm kind of in the conspiratorial world. And I'm a little bit in the politics world and have the dividing of factions and is America dividing. And I just wanted to see this movie because I'm into movies like that. Like what's that movie called? Until the End of the World that just came out recently. And and I met Christina Dunch a few years back at a Halloween party with uh, like a celebrity friend of mine, his father, who's big time in Hollywood with Spike Jones. And, but long story short, I met Kristen Dunst and she was about to film this movie. Uh, this is about three and a half years ago or three years ago. It might have been a little after that, but uh, it might have been two and a half. I'm not quite sure the dates. But I wanted to watch this movie and I saw the trailer and I was like, what the heck? How are we going to have a civil war? And, and how, if, how is California and Texas? Again, hopefully no spoiler alerts. But uh, how is California and Texas going to be the starters of a civil war? And, you know, who's the president? And what's going on? Because a lot of people think that we are headed toward a civil war. You know, it looks that way. You know, so many the Democrats are fighting the Republicans, the independents. You know, certain states are basically just not wanting to do what the president tells them to do. The laws that the president is putting in, whether it be Biden or whoever, they don't like it. So a lot of people think that we can literally have a civil war. And if you believe in predictive programming, like that movie that came out on Netflix, the end of the world movie, I, f I hope that's the name of it. But um, I can't remember all the time. But I believe in predictive programming. And this is possibly one of those movies that's like predictive programming that's predicting the future and we're watching it and programming before it actually happens. But a lot of people think that we might literally have a civil war in our country um, based off the way it's looking and, and how it's going. And history does repeat itself. So Civil War was an interesting movie for me to watch, you know, for all those various reasons. Plus it's an A24 movie and you guys keep telling me how good they are. And let's just get to the nitty gritty. My initial reaction of the movie is I wanted to see it. So I was a little bit of a fanboy going in. I knew the premise. I wanted to see how they were going to do the premise. Um, and the overending story, or my review is, it was intense. I liked it a lot. It's an actor's movie. There's a lot of acting. Then there's moments that... There's visualizations and things that happen, and you're like, wow, that's pretty intense. Like, if you think about it from that faction. Some people won't care, but the imagery on this movie, it was directed so well. So well. And I, I've never jump scared for many years. 
in anything. I don't even like horror movies, but I jump scared in this movie probably three times at least, where I literally, oh, and I said a bad word. I'm like, oh, and then the other people in the crowd or the theater were like, but it got some of them too, like you heard screams. That means I was into the movie. At that moment, I wasn't even thinking about a jump scare or what might happen. And and we saw it on IMAX. So that helped as well. Um, and the theater was great. It was great. Um, but the overall journey of the movie is, I thought it was going to be where they pick sides. <laughs> You know, it might be from the Democratic point of view, the MAGA point of view, whatever you want to call it. I thought it was going to be like from that point of view, you know, and in the trailer, remember, they're like, what kind of American are you? You know, when Jesse Plemons holds the gun. Um, but the movie did a real good job of watching everything from afar and not taking. You didn't know that anybody had a side. So that was what was so scary about it, because they basically travel, these reporters or journalists or press, they travel from one area of New York to go to Washington, where they believe a coup is going to happen. And again, if I'm giving spoiler alert, forgive me, you know, turn it off now. I don't know what is a spoiler, what's not a spoiler. But, you know, they go on a, a journey to get the story. Because America is having a civil war. And apparently there's four factions. And California and Texas succeeded from America, became their own entity. Then there's something called the Western Forces. And I got to look at the map and they don't really explain it. They really don't. They show everything from the press journalist perspective. And there's one famous press journalist, Christian Dunst character, and another younger one that befriends her. They go on the journey... They go on the journey together. They go from like state to state to state to get to Washington because an event is going to happen in Washington, D.C. And they want to interview the president because they think, you know, that they're going to get him out of office or something's going to happen to him. And they only have a certain amount of time. So they want to be the first ones there to try to interview the president before he's gone or before whatever happens. So they go on that journey. Then they go from state to state while they're traveling from New York to D.C. And there's like riots and different, like, not cult, but like different beliefs, you know, in each individual state. And so they have to stop and get gas. And then there's scary stuff, like just to get gas in your car. They're like, can we get gas? It's okay. I'll pay you. How much? 300? 300 will only buy you a sandwich. No, 300 Canadian. Okay. 300 Canadian is good. And they're in America. It, just fascinating stuff like that. Since when did 300 Canadian become more than 300 American dollars? It's because they separated. And there's different dollar bills on different factions, and they're worth more or they're worth less. It's insane. It's just crazy. And there's a lot of little moments within their journey. They're intense. There might be five or six of these moments, and almost every one of them is intense. I was along for the ride, man. I was and there was, in my opinion, much to be desired with the ending because I had a lot more questions than I did. But that was also the point. But the images throughout this movie, again, if you're like a, a war person, a conspiracy theorist, a political person, if you like war movies, you want to understand why people go to war or why they do whatever they do, I think it's fantastic. It, it, it's very scary. And um, they actually filmed a lot of the ending in Washington, D.C. Actually in Washington, D.C. by the White House and everything. And it wasn't fake locations. And I was like, wow. 
And then as a conspiracy theorist, many years ago, like right after Joe Biden um, went into office, sorry, my ear is popping. Right after Joe Biden went into office, we had J6. And then, then on certain websites, we saw military vehicles and we saw shooting in Washington and people were like, you know, uh, they shut down Washington and there was videos coming out of like bullets coming off of the roofs and tanks and truckers in front of the White House and all that. And we were getting videos online as a conspiracy theorist and we were like, what's going on? Why is the military shooting weapons or why is there bullets in Washington? And they were like, oh, you know, it's because Donald Trump doesn't want to give up office or Joe Biden's actually not in charge. So there was a lot of theories about it. And then there is actual proof, if you guys want to go out there and look it up, there's actual proof that for the first three months that Joe Biden was in office, when he was signing his initial laws or, or whatever he does when they first go into office, um, he was doing it from a set. Um, whether it was in Hollywood or somewhere, it wasn't his actual White House room or his um, office, but it was made to look like his office. And this is proof. They, they started saying it was on the second floor of the White House, but his room is normally on the third or his office is normally on the third floor or however that worked. But, he, but the rumors were that he was on a Hollywood film set and they were faking it to look like his office because when he signed the, the laws or whatever he did, it looked like his office, but it's not. So there's a lot of theories rumored that Donald Trump was still in power. Joe Biden was not in power. The military was taking over the country. This is around the time of the Q-A-N-O-N and stuff like that. Um, but I saw a lot of videos of Washington, D.C. with military vehicles and, and all that. And I didn't know where that was coming from. Was that literally legit? Was Biden being arrested or something like that, you know? Again, those were all the theories um, that the military was taking the country over. But now after watching this movie, I can't say it for sure. I'm going to have to do some research. But I do believe this movie was 100% filmed like out in front of the White House and in Washington and in these areas. And I got to look up the time frame. But these might have been those videos that I was seeing of actual military vehicles and lights and gunfire, you know, from people's rooftops or apartments in Washington. They're like, hey, there's like bullets flying around the White House and stuff like that. This might have been them filming that movie if it was actually in D.C., which I think it was. So I'm really interested in looking that up and, and trying to, um, you know, do some information on that. If it was actually all in D.C., was it around that time frame that I saw all these videos online? It's just fascinating to me. Um, but long story short, I enjoyed the movie. It's really, it draws you in. If you go there to pay attention and to watch, you're going to get drawn in. Um, you don't have to be 100% political or you don't even know what's going on in the movie because they didn't pick a side. The reporters never picked a side, but there was moments in there where somebody told them, what side are you on? And if they said the wrong answer, something bad might happen. And it's intense with them just trying to answer a question. You know, like, what kind of American are you? You're like, oh, shit. <laughs> you get it? Like, when it gets to that point in the movie, you can see it in the trailer. It's not a spoiler alert. But, like, when it gets to that point in the movie, you're like, there's no right answer. Any answer you give might end up in you getting hurt. It's intense. Well acted. I had a great time. I jump scared. And I guess the question, I'll ask it at the end of the review, but I had a couple of questions during the movie, and these are just what I witnessed during the movie. And the photographers, the press people, they went on the journey. There was mainly four of them. Uh, and there was this younger gentleman, a Latin looking gentleman, but they all used regular cameras. 
you know, not video cameras, not today's DSLRs, you know, that does video and photographs. And the movie shows you photographs and still photos, like the pictures they're taking while they're following the war happen and, and everything. Um, and I was like, why ain't nobody do a video? And they actually had film, not both the cameras. One of the camera used film. And I was like, isn't film hard to come by? And they, they were developing the film on the journey, like from their pocket with like liquid. And I was like, I know that's possible, but that's weird. <laughs> and how easy is it to get film? Why isn't any one of them filming actual digital video? And then the man gentleman, the Latin looking guy, he never took any pictures. I never once saw him with a camera. <laughs> He's just running around with them. <laughs> and I was like, what kind of journalist are you? So it was a little interesting and weird. And then there was many points where they were going from different areas of America to the next area. And, they, you know, they'd have a blockade, whether it be soldiers or militia or military standing there. And then they're driving in a van that says press on the outside to let everybody know they're press. Then they get to the little gate or whatever, the roadblock. And then they're like, you know, they show them the badges and they look at it. OK, go ahead. And I'm like. You don't need a badge to be press. That is a fake thing that people show in movies because under the Constitution of America, now granted this movie divides America, so maybe they were all living under a different Constitution. You know, that's some interesting stuff they did not explain. But um, they showed their press badges and they're okay. You know, and they're allowed to film everything and walk around the soldiers and and, and I was like, huh? Why is every faction allowing the press to do that? <laughs> and then even in the movie, they mention the press will get KIL'd in, in there somewhere because the journalists are like enemies of the state. But yet they were welcomed almost everywhere. But I don't, they don't, you don't have to show a badge. That's just a fake idea. You know, oh, you, you have to work for the Washington press or the New York Journal, the New York Times, the LA Times, oh, you know, you have to have a badge. Bull heck. The Constitution of America says freedom of press. As long as you got a camera and you call yourself a press person, you don't need a badge. There are no badges. You could print up something that just says press and you're press. So I had a little problem with that. Like, why are they even showing fake badges? It, you don't, it doesn't, you don't need one. You don't really don't. It's just to say, ooh, look, look, press badge. But we're all press. We could all pick up a camera. We could all be press. You know, because I watch the auditing videos where they go to the, you know, the police stations, the, the post office, the airports, and they film outside of the, the jails, you know, the public property. We could all be press. But that was the only issues I really had with the movie. And um, it's like, why didn't they film anything with digital cameras? And it was just, how do they find film? But it was a good movie overall. And it was really intense. And the ending leaves a lot of questions. Leaves a lot of questions. But it was intense. And the images that come from the ending are going to stick with me. Maybe not other people. But they're going to stick with me. I have a lot of questions. But it was scary too. Because to think it might happen like that. Um, so I enjoyed it. I really did. I really did. I gave it like an 8 out of a 10. Basically, um, I had a good time. Uh, and people are calling it an anti-Trump movie. You can kind of see that. It, you know, you can compare the president in this movie. To Donald Trump if you want to but they really didn't show him like Trump or anything they made little subtle suggestions so it could be considered an anti-Trump movie because you know they think Trump is going to divide America and create a civil war and you know he's going to have a three-term president again but it was interesting so some people can call it an anti-Trump movie some people want to call it a Democratic movie versus Republicans. But they didn't really show any of that 
And they didn't really explain any of that. They didn't pick sides. They just showed a journey of these, uh, you know, press people. And it was pretty intense. And I enjoyed it. All right, guys, that's it for my movie review. I'm pretty bushed. I'm pretty tired, but I'm so thankful to get out and hang out with some good people. And hopefully I have some more movie reviews in the future. I think I'm going to buy, if I can afford it, I still got to look into it. But they have an AMC pass for like 20 bucks a month where you can watch three movies a week of any movie, any theater for 20 bucks a month, three movies a week. And now I got a bus pass. Maybe I can do that one month, you know, and see a bunch of movies. And hopefully we got some more reviews. Please hit that thumbs up, that like, that subscribe button. Let me know your thoughts on Civil War down below. Did you have any questions? What were your thoughts on it? And I guess the question that I can ask you guys to answer from this movie is, do you think we're headed toward a civil war? And do you think what happened in the movie where we could actually have a civil war in 20, 30, 40, whatever years? Let me know your thoughts down below. I love you. Good night. Stay happy. Stay healthy. Stay blessed. Hate can't hurt happy, so try to be happy.